it is another moment that we gather here to hear the word of the Lord. Today we are going to speak about Take Me to the King. Is a prayer that I'm having that you take me to the King. Out of our Bible reading comes from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 16. Esther chapter 4 verse 16 Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day, and I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Taking me to the king, as you can, as you have already heard from the book of Esther, it is a prayer even for me to prepare to be taken to the king. Last week, I said that God himself being the wall of fire allowed his people he is there to protect his people. But sometimes people construct a borderless among themselves. They advocate mutual, spiritual exclusivity. In the process and the practice of making such a huge division, we need to go to the king as a sign of unity. Paul, to the church of Ephesians, encourage them and also encourage us today to be diligent in preserving the unity and the board of peace as recorded in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 3. Also it's good for us to be aware that when we have separation, when we have dichotomy we cannot lead the king. King is more looking for the people with a united mind, with a united purpose, people who are speaking the same voice, people who are serving the same king. King is looking for that person in the unity of purpose. And uh, for a moment, it is sand. And he is giving me goose palm bum to say that we are supposed to be united, speaking with one voice, serving one God. But what is happening is not, the, is not so. We have diversity and not diversity of purpose. We need then to go to the king to present our prayer. We need to go to the king to let him understand our worries and uh, our expectation of serving him, serving one God, not having separation or uh, that is this one or that one. We need to be united. Uh, today, God is looking and seeking for Moses of our days. The person who is going to go to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go to worship me, that is to worship God. Moses did understand something that I, I can echo today. Worship is a community affair. It's not a personal affair. That is why in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, verse 8 and 9, he says, We shall go with our young and old. We must all hold a feast to the Lord. We must all hold a feast to the Lord. Moses was lost in option. Rather than going separately, it is good for them to draw a bit, wait for the time to be light for all to go to the feast together, to go in the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord. 
he opted for them to delay just a bit before they embarked the journey of going to the wilderness. He needed young and old to go to hold a feast together to the Lord. We also need Daniel, who when found king being disturbed, sought permission to go to him and to offer a cardinal duty of interpreting the dream as recorded in the book of Daniel chapter 2, verse 8, going on. We also need Esther today to go to the king to intervene for her people. Esther requested all Jews to stand with her as she prepared to go to before the king for three days to wear sackcloth, sleep on arches, and pray and fast so that she may have favor in the eyes of the king. That's why by asking all Jews in Shusha to join in a fasting as a way of acknowledging that she need more than her own human courage. She needed warmth, which come from the corporate worship, which come from the fellowship. I can speculate what was going on in her mind. I need company to the king. Although not physically, I just need few girls to go to the king. I need company. She also had a feeling that the options were few. She felt she has no strength of her own. She cannot fight the battle alone. And she also cried before the king that he need to intervene. She was there to tell her, to tell him the truth of the situation of her people and uh, she needed a task to change the life of her people, to change the fortune and to change the way they were leading because they, she needed corporate, not personal. Even us, at this moment, we need a task from the king so that we continue to worship God as a corporate not as a personal issue. The task was huge for her. She needed preparation. She needed people to help her so that she, she may be appear presentable, emotionally to be stable, and also to be in a position to touch the king's heart. I'm trying to struggle with these patent issues. One, who is to go before the king today? Two, who can be allowed to speak on our behalf to the king? The answer may range from uh, one with a clean hand, one with a pure heart, one who does not speak lies, one who is not deceitful. So one of them can be allowed to speak on our behalf when you have a clean hand, when you have a pure heart, when you do not speak lies and you do not dwell in the deceitful. You can be allowed to speak on our behalf in the presence of the king. I said I need someone to take me to the king because there is a blessing when I'm the Lord's presence. In the presence of the king, there is protection. In the presence of the king, there is protection. Esther had no other option. The only available is asking king to protect her people. Is the only option. And to us, God has promised us that he will be our host in the banquet that he have already prepared. As we can see in the book of the Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28, come to me. 
and he will protect us from our enemies. Remember, God is both shepherd and host. Therefore, he will offer protection and guidance to us to and form. He is there to protect us. In the king's presence, there is a promise of protection. The second issue that we need when we go to in the presence is a waiver. We need a waiver in the presence of the king. The waiver of the Lord is the power that changes things. The power that alters things from their, for his own glory. Waiver is just a grace that is poured freely among the people so that they may have abundance peace. They may have abundance grace that God is giving to his people. That is what we can, when we are talking about waiver, is that uh, outpouring of grace that God is pouring to his people. It is also a divine anointing. And uh, it happened once in the house of Obed Edom, as recorded in the book of the First Colonical, chapter 13, verse 14. The whole house was blessed because of housing the ark of the Lord. That is the favor that we need. When we go to the king, we are going to ask a favor. The, the, the one, the power that is going to alter our life for good, our life for best, our life for greater, the one that we need from the Lord. We also need, the, there is a, also a fullness of joy in God's presence. There is, we need joy, and we can only be assured in the presence of our King is where we are going to have the fullness and you can underline the fullness of joy, the joy that we need in the midst of the chaos and trouble, is, can only be found through Jesus Christ. James recorded about count it a pure joy if you are in the Lord. You can count it a pure joy if you are in the Lord. Joy is just an attitude of heart, and it usually depends with who is leaning in your life, who is ruling your life. So, when in the presence of the king, the joy outweighs all other competing, competing emotions. It also outweighs afflictions and pain, the one that may be undergoing. It also, the joy outweighs the poverty either for the poverty of mind or the physical poverty. The joy of the Lord, the one that you are going to get in his presence, outweighs all our worries, and it also quenches our thirst. We feel satisfied that the Lord is with us. The joy overflows with gladness, so we need to go to the Lord we need to be in the, His presence so that we may receive the fullness of joy. And God is promising us in the book of Psalms, chapter 16, verse 11, that He is going to guide us through the path of life to the presence where there is fullness of joy and pressure forever. That's a promise for me and for you. When we go to the King, we are going to have the fullness of joy. The presence, of the, king, the presence of the king brings victory and deliverance. We need to go to the king so that we have victory and deliverance, being our point number four. He has already promised that he's going to fight for us, as we can see in the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. I will fight for you. He also promised us that he is going to be with us in the book of Exodus. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, he has promised that he is going to be with us and also he is commanding us, fear not, for he is with us, as we can see in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 6 and 9. Therefore, brethren, I seek someone who is going to take me to the king. 
I need someone who is going to help me to go to the king. You can either help me financially, but that is not viable. You can help me through your prayers and the praises that you can assist me to go to the king. And I am going to come with the goodies. The one that you've already found here, fullness of joy, protection, victory, as I've already named there up. Therefore, in conclusion, never take to be in the king's presence for granted. Never take it to be for granted. You need to prepare well and seek the, the system, uh, to seek the system to help you and also you need people to help you, both emotionally, physically, psychologically, and do not panic when the Lord presses. The King of Kings is always looking for someone to bless, as recorded in the book of the Second Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 9. He is full of mercy, and he has extraordinary gift and privilege for us. The presence of God is also for the whole assembly, not for the few people, but for the whole assembly. Let the whole assembly agree to stand in the presence of God. Let the whole assembly to prepare well to go in the King's presence. Let the whole assembly celebrate together. That is, both mighty men to lead, singer to follow, with the songs, harps, lyres, tabling, trumpet, and drums. Let us all celebrate together, being united, being together, let us celebrate and let this celebration go on without end. So, you are there to take me, to help me to go to the king. I'm seeking your support. The, the people, they are, they are there looking for you, so that you may support them to go to the king. Where they are going to get joy, where they are going to get victory, where they are going to get protection, where they are going to get favor, because God has already prepared that for us. In the name of the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.